Asia A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast. What an amazing week it is around this planet of ours. No matter where you are, I'm sure you're having a great time. For us here in Australia, it's just started to get really cold and it's the start of winter and I don't particularly like that. So for all of you northerners, I'm really jealous that you're moving into warmer weather. Just send some down here for me. So anyway, this week, the Simply Tarot card of the week is a very ambiguous card and a lot of my students used to freak when they used to see this card. It's called the death card. It means under no circumstances that you are dying. You are certainly not going to be leaving the planet anytime soon. It is a card that says death of situation or endings in your life. So when we have endings, change and transformation in our life, it's always followed by new beginnings. So I look at this card in a very, very positive way. If this card comes out in a reading or comes out over several days in a reading, it's indicating that your life is about to change. Anything that has been holding you down, weighing you down, things that you've been trying to bring to a completion that you've been working hard on or things that you just want to be gone in your life, this is the card that we're looking for. It says that it is coming to a completion. It's an end, it's a change, and it will be followed by new beginnings. And sometimes we don't really appreciate that in our lives, that sometimes for new things to come in, we have to make way for it. If we just kept everything in our lives, how cluttered would our lives be? Imagine when your, your children are little and their toy box becomes overflowing. What does mum do? She goes through the toy box and has a little eradication process, and that makes way for new new toys to become favourites. Well, this is how you've got to look at your life. Your life is like a toy box. We need to empty it out every now and then or take some items out so that we can bring more in. So this is a very, very positive card. So for anybody that's been looking to bring transformation into their life, this is the card for you. So this week we have, you know, quite an interesting sort of area that we're going to move into now. It's called astrology. And each week I like to sort of focus on it's like a Polaroid snapshot for those of you that are old enough to remember what a Polaroid photo was. You used to be able to take a photo and it popped out the end. It was instantaneous. It was revolutionary. Today we take them on our phone. So it's like taking a Polaroid snapshot of where the planets are sitting just prior to the show. And I like to do that just prior to the show because then it's the most up to the minute report that I can give you. So I don't sit down and break down the 12 signs and what you're going to be going through each week. I'll give you a snapshot of what's actually happening. I'll tell you which signs it's affecting and the ones that it's affecting the most. So we're going to kick the astrology section off with saying happy birthday to all the Geminis. The sun's just gone into Gemini so it's your time of the year to shine. It's your time to celebrate, it's your time to party and have a good time. So the sun moving into Gemini to me always signals that you know we're nearly almost at the halfway point in the year in the calendar year and it's an exciting time because for all the 12 signs it means it's a time to sort of stop, take, look and listen. You know, let's take a little bit of stock of how much have we achieved in this last five months since the beginning of the year? Have we been able to really sort of move forward with the things that we want to move forward with in our lives? Are we really sort of on target for our New Year's resolutions? That seems such a long time ago, but the things that we set down that we wanted to achieve in this year. So we're five months into it. We're over the third of the third mark. So we're heading into the halfway mark. So we need to sort of reassess where we're heading in that way. So happy birthday to all the Geminis. So it's a really exciting time of the year for them because it's their time to shine. Now I'm going to be focusing now on the Taurus section of the chart because we have three planets here that are sitting together or holding hands or what's known in astrological terms as a conjunction. So this will predominantly affect Tauruses, Virgos, Capricorns, and the opposite sign of Scorpio. For the rest of the remaining eight signs, it just washes over you more gently. It doesn't affect you in quite the same dramatic, definite sort of way as it does of those four signs that I spoke about. So Uranus is the planet of the unusual and the unexpected. Uranus is like a bolt of lightning. Uranus comes along and it stirs things up. So you need to be very, very careful in this next seven days that what you send out to the universe that you actually want to happen because Uranus comes along and says, oh, great, you said you don't like your job anymore or bang, gone. And you didn't mean that. You just meant you were having a bad day. You didn't particularly like it today. You didn't mean you wanted it gone forever. So be very, very careful of the statements that you make. Uranus is conjunct or holding hands. Venus, 
which is the planet of love and affection or where we look for in our chart the things that give us pleasure now venus actually rules the sign of taurus so venus feels very very comfortable here so it's it's, it's a time for particularly taurians to really feel at comfort in their own home you know to feel comfortable in their lives to sort of maybe treat themselves to a special little treat you know or buy something that's going to put a smile on their face mind you don't spend too much money because we know Tauruses don't like to part with their hard-earned cash but it's a time that you can reward yourself it's also a time for those that might be seeking love to look in different places because as I said with Uranus here the bolt of lightning things coming out of the blue things happening out of nowhere it's a time that we sort of step out of our comfort zone a bit if you're looking for love now this is applies to the whole 12 signs don't just keep putting your feet in the same places that you normally go to you know if you want to get a new relationship or find love in your life you've got to step out of your comfort zone a bit and Uranus here can help that I'm not saying it's going to guarantee to fix the the whole world's love problems but it's certainly going to create opportunities for those that are prepared to step out of their comfort zone and be open to new suggestions or open to new types of people entering their lives and one of those may turn out to be somebody special so it's a time to sort of go to places that are connected to the earth as well because we're sitting in Taurus at the moment so that includes things like restaurants art galleries jewelry shows fashion parades anything that's got a creative or a foodie type flair to it and that brings in lots of things I mean you know we think of earth and we think of tractor shows and we think of you know outdoor fairs and things that might have a slant towards farming or the environment or anything along those lines because don't forget it is in Taurus so we're looking at earthy sort of practical down to earth sort of things that doesn't rule out things like going to a trade fair that might be on interior design because that comes under that too so you know step out into some different areas the final conjunction here or the holding hands is Jupiter the planet of expansion of opportunity and luck so for those of you that might be wanting to expand or hopefully start up a new business or create more income this is the perfect lineup for this but it's got to be something that you're passionate about it's not something that you take up because you know oh it'll earn me some extra money I'll go and be an uber driver but I hate driving well that's not necessarily going to bring you the joy and necessarily bring you the financial rewards either because your heart and your soul won't be in it it needs to be something practical it needs to be something that you love to do and it needs to be something that not everybody's going to make a million dollars out of or a million pounds out of we have to look at something that sort of might just make your heart sing and you make a few little bits of money along the side you know and that that's enough to sort of to gain the, the reward out of for all your hard efforts so just be aware of that it's a time of great opportunity so to recap on the tourist section things can happen very suddenly make sure you're very passionate about what you're doing and make sure that you're you're putting yourself in places where opportunities can roll in the door for you too but don't forget anywhere we find Jupiter in the chart also we can find expanding waistlines so be a little bit careful if you've got a sweet tooth because Taurus does really like to indulge a little bit in the sweeter side of life and also likes the the rich heavy concentrated foods that tend to be calorie driven so we're going to move on to another area of the chart now known as the North Node now the North Node is not actually a planet it's where we look for what we are all aspiring to achieve in our lives now at the moment the North Node is actually sitting in Aries so this is going to affect the fire signs Aries Leo Sagittarius the opposite sign being Libra but it is going to wash over the other remaining eight signs as well so when we have the North Node it's trying to show us what we're aspiring to or what we're trying to achieve now with it conjunct or holding hands Mars is the planet of action Mars is the planet that makes us get out of bed every morning and say you know this is what I've got to try and achieve for the day is conjunct or holding hands Chiron now Chiron is not a planet Chiron is where we look for in a chart where we might be wounded where we might need healing something that we might have brought in from a previous lifetime for those of you that believe Believe in reincarnation and I certainly do that we've all been here before and we'll probably all be coming back again we all come here with lessons to learn and some people sort of look and say oh that person's had an easy life well they might be this time but you don't know what they've been through in previous lifetimes that got them to this point that maybe they've done their karmic lessons they've learnt their lessons and this time round life is meant to be a bit easier because that is their reward 
So where we find this configuration in a chart, we're aspiring to, towards trying to improve our lives, to make our lives better. And we're doing this with drive and determination, but we're also trying to heal ourselves at the same time. Now, I know I've been working a lot with fire sign people this year, and a lot of them have been saying to me, a lot of things have been coming back into their mind of their past. Things that they thought that they had dealt with and and, and processed and, and really let go of years ago. And they, they're asking the question, but why is this coming back, Amanda? It's not saying that you haven't completed the lesson or you didn't do the due diligence at the time or you didn't process it or you didn't let go of it. What it's showing you is it's like a slideshow. It's like bringing it in on a PowerPoint presentation and to bring it up to modern terms and sort of showing you that glimpse of, okay, that's what happened then. This was what you had to do and that was the result and we let it go. And it's just showing you how far you've come. It's not necessarily saying you haven't done the work or you haven't done the, the processing or learnt the lessons from it. It's showing you sort of almost like from birth to now, how far you've progressed and how you got to this point, the lessons that you had to learn in a PowerPoint presentation going flick, 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 flick. So these are very positive things. So the more that that's actually happening, the better it is because it means that your life is really on cue for some major changes or some major turning points coming up and hopefully they will be rewards because of all the hard work that you've done. So don't look at that in a negative. Look at that very much in a positive and say to yourself, gee, I'm lucky then that okay, if I'm getting these sort of little slideshows or PowerPoint presentations periodically, day or night, that that means that I'm right on cue for where I need to be. And, it, you know, it, sometimes it can, it can still feel overwhelming. Sometimes it can drag up emotions that we thought we'd been able to process or deal with, particularly if it's connected with the passing of a loved one or a friend or somebody we were close to. And we don't sort of understand why all of a sudden this overwhelming emotion can almost take us back to the beginning point of what, of when that, that tragedy occurred. And that's also very healing because it means that we, even though we found a comfortable place to, to put those memories, to put those emotions, that we are still human and we can still sort of tear up, even if it is 40 years later. There's no timetable on how long we grieve for or how long we keep somebody close to us just because they've departed the planet and they're not able to sit down and have a cup of coffee with us doesn't mean that they've left us. And sometimes it's also their way of sort of showing you that they're around too. So don't look at it on a negative. You know, if the tears start rolling down your face for somebody that's no longer here with us in the physical, it's okay. You know, we're all human. We're allowed to experience these emotions. I mean, I have them from time to time as well. You know, nobody's immune to this sort of thing. And I think as the older we get, the more we understand how precious life is and how precious the ones that, you know, are in our lives we should keep them close. We should, you know, try and make every day as if it's our last because we never know when it is our last day. So, you know, that's my message for the week is, you know, hold your loved ones pretty close to you because you never know how long we've got them for. So finally, I'm going to wrap up with Neptune in Pisces. Now, Neptune's been in Pisces for quite some time now and Neptune does actually rule Pisces. But when a, a planet's kept getting near the end of its run in a sign or just entering the new one. This is when the energy is really at its most intense because it's like, in, in the case of Neptune, it's like I've only got a limited amount of time to get in there and finalise the lessons that I wanted to teach everybody while I was in Pisces before I move into Aries. Now, Pisces, this will affect Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpios, the opposite sign of Pisces is Virgo. It'll just wash over the other, 11, uh, other eight signs. Now, it's really important here with Neptune entering the last degree of Pisces, this also means it's the final sign of the zodiac before he moves into a brand new 360 degree cycle of moving into Aries. So at the moment, we are being asked to dig deep into our souls to make sure that there's nothing there that we're hiding from ourselves, trying to deceive or cheat somebody else out of, or trying to just be not a nice person. It's asking us to be kind, it's to be, to be expansive, to be generous, to sort of treat other people as we want to be treated ourselves. Neptune in Pisces can be, you know, an illusionary, delusionary sort of thing. It can also be that, you know, finally we come out of the dark tunnel into the bright light, but it's also a very creative energy as well. So, you know, a lot of singers and songwriters and artists and things like that around the world have really reveled in Neptune in Pisces because their creative juices have been flowing. 
and flowing more so than they have done in years. So it doesn't mean when Neptune moves into Aries, all of a sudden that all shuts down and nobody ever writes another song. It just means it'll go into a different energy. So enjoy it while it's there for its last little, you know, hurrah in Pisces, because it's important that we, we understand and we work with these energies before they move on. We've also still got Pluto's just started its dance through Aquarius. I mean, there's a lot of conjecture about how Pluto is really going to unfold in Aquarius over the, you know, the next so many years. It's still very sort of unknown. Pluto's going retrograde at the moment. So he's having a sort of a little bit of a dance backwards at the moment. His, his energy will probably seem to be a little bit less powerful at the moment because he will slip back into Capricorn for a little while there. But we'll talk about that when it comes a little bit closer. But Pluto is really, his role is to go in and teach us things. It's slow, deliberate, definite, and the lessons learnt by Pluto are never forgotten. So when you're looking at Pluto's just entered a sign like Aquarius, and the Aquarian energy is that I know everything, just ask me, I'll tell you. They sometimes can get a bit too fixed and a little bit too rigid in the way that they look at things. So it's going to be really difficult here for Aquarians particularly to understand how this energy is going to work, that Pluto is going to come in and he's going to try and transform their lives over a number of years. It's not going to be a sudden, deliberate, definite thing unless you're a very, very early Aquarian. It's going to be a very slow process. You're going to find that your thinking is going to change over time. You may change your mind on how you view things, how you look at things. You may even find that you'll, you know, take up different study or dress differently or do something completely different. And that's okay because that's Pluto coming in and slowly and deliberately sort of bringing some positive changes to your life. Some people will find it really uncomfortable and really difficult and want to fight it that's not necessarily the answer you know the the lessons i've learned over the years in astrology is don't fight it go with it the more you fight it or the more you think you've got a handle on it the more the planets will show you that you don't actually have all the answers at all that the answers are yet to come so that's where we're going to leave the astrology section we're going to talk to heather in memphis in tennessee are you there heather hi yes i'm here am i able to have that long of a reading too that was a long reading <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll do my very best, Heather. What's your question, sweetie? Thank you. Um, 12-21-87, 8.39am, Memphis, Tennessee, born. I'm calling about, do you need that or not? Not, at the, not, not in the short time I've okay. got on the show, but that's really helpful, Heather. What's your question, sweetie? Okay, no problem. Um, I'm calling about a relationship thing. Um, somebody got dated five years ago. We, we're kind of trying to try to try it again. Mm -hmm. I'm healing a lot too, but it's not alcohol related. He's going back and forth with like addiction and stuff with alcohol. That's all in it. I'm pretty sure it's just alcohol. And we really got into it. I, I fought back. I didn't fight physically, but the way he spoke to me, I, I went over there to try to talk to them and his family was really irate um towards me and i was like look he owes me a conversation after that and after he told me this for no reason then he accused mm -hmm. me of something that he did I, five years ago i said of course i told your family unless you're lucky i didn't file a police report on you you should be thanking right. me you know i mean what what is going on here why is he treating me like this and you know is, is he just ugh, what does he feel like this isn't fair to me like I feel like I told him I said you wouldn't have gotten a job if I didn't even if I didn't come back you haven't worked in like five years for what you said if that's even true because I'm starting yeah. to think that he's telling me certain things that I mean I don't know but and that's it's what I get hard, like you know. Yeah, darling, look, it's always hard when you try and reconnect with somebody that's from your past because nine times out of ten, nobody's really learnt the lessons of why the relationship came to an end. And this is a classic case of it. You know, you've done the work on yourself. You know, you hopefully have sort of worked through your your your, your Well, not your enough because the way I reacted was, I mean, I, I, but it was upsetting. Like, I don't let people do me that way. I just don't. Nobody does that to me anymore. I don't let it happen. Maybe before. And it's funny you were talking about Neptune and Pisces. I've got that 12th house placement. I've got a lot right. of 12th house placements. So. Okay, so it's not 
got a lot of 12th house placements, that means you've got a lot of hidden stuff. There's a lot of stuff that you that's calming. Yeah, that but I've done through. through a lot of spiritual awakenings too in my twin flame die last year. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's a good thing. But what I'm trying to say to you is not everything that, you know, you've done is necessarily a bad thing. Just because you reacted to the way he treated you, that doesn't mean you've regressed. What that means in, in my simple terms well, is the fact that you're, now no longer, you're not going to allow somebody to speak to you or treat you in that fashion. You've drawn a line in the sand and said, this is not acceptable. Okay, look, maybe you've said a few things that you wish you could retract or whatever. Look, I don't think he's done the work that he claims he's done on himself this is one of those classic cases where he's done it in his mind but hasn't physically done the hard work he thinks he has when you're dealing with somebody that has an addiction problem whether it's alcohol drugs sex doesn't matter what the addiction is it still comes down to the same basic things unless they get some professional help and learn how to manage it and it is like a disease unless you learn how to manage it you you can't just sort of say oh i've stopped drinking or i've stopped doing this and then next week i can go and have a drink and it's okay it doesn't work that way there's a lot of steps involved in this look i appreciate that the two of you want to sort of explore the potential of getting back together again and trying to reignite this relationship the thing is you've got to sort of look at the whole picture you know here he is he's not happy that you told his family about an incident okay maybe you shouldn't have maybe you did you know what does it matter it's done it's it's been done they shouldn't be sort of judging you because you two have had a, an argument and taking his side you know i mean i appreciate they're his family and they should stick up for him but they really shouldn't be sticking their nose in your business as you two as a couple unless invited so i think there's got to be some real definite boundaries here that have got to be set and they've got to be agreed together you know, it can't just you set the boundaries and he says, well, that's okay for you, but I don't agree with them. You've got to set them together. It's really difficult when, when a relationship comes to an end, it's really difficult to go back and try and mend it unless you really get to the bottom of the issues of why the relationship come to, came to an end. I always look at relationships like a cup. You can break a cup and you can glue it back together again, but you can always see where the cracks have been. It's never perfect again. And this is the same thing with relationships. Unless you're prepared to both get some professional help and get some counselling and sort of look at the things that brought this relationship to an end at the beginning, then the chances of you getting back together again, are, yeah, okay, you can get back together again 50 times, but the chances of it working out are probably remote and none because we haven't actually worked through the problems together together and found some solutions and set some honest boundaries and then work together as a couple. He seems to be reaching out to you because he's looking to you to be his lifeline is what I'm picking up. You're looking at him and saying, I still love you. I still believe I can fix you. They're not good reasons to go back into a relationship, particularly if you don't get some professional help. I think it's something that the two of you are going to have to really sit down and discuss and look at it. I think we need to let some of the emotions settle down, Heather, and, you know, things will seem a lot easier then. I'm not saying that I think this relationship is made in heaven because I don't believe it is. I think there's a lot of work to be done, but I'm not saying that it can't be done. So that's where we're going to leave Heather now. And we're going to talk with Cindy in London, in Ontario, in Canada. Are you there, Cindy? Yes, I am. How are you? Very good. Thank you, sweetie. Do you have a question I can answer for you, sweetheart? I would just... I'm sure you get this asked a million times, but I would like to know if my financial situation will finally iron out and be stable so I can basically outlive the rest of my, what's left of it at 57. <laughs> Oh, darling, at 57, you're still a young spring chicken, you know, so hopefully you've got another 30 or 40 or 50 years ahead of you. I mean, it's not a death sentence now at 57, that's for sure. Yeah, it is a question I get asked often. I mean, you know, it's probably the second most important question next to love. And what I'm sort of seeing is the changes that you've made and the things that you've done in your life, you've been working towards this slowly but surely in very definite steps of shoring up your finances. So I want to say well done to you and here's a packet of gold stars for your effort because you really really, really have worked hard towards it. I think sometimes though, Cindy, I think you get a little bit too, you hold on to money a little bit too tightly. And I'm not saying go out and spend everything you've got. I don't mean that. But I think sometimes you've got to loosen those purse strings a little bit, you know, particularly if you see something and you think, oh, gee, that'd be really nice. Oh, that's, that's frivolous. That's silly. 
sometimes we've got to buy ourselves that little frivolous silly thing because it shows the universe that we are prepared to sort of let go of some of that money that we're not hanging on to it too tightly that you know and then and then you know more can come in sometimes i think we hang on to it a little bit too much i have a, a best girlfriend who rings me occasionally and says oh i've gone out and i've just done such and such and i say well you needed to buy that new dining room suite didn't you and i can justify it for her and she feels so much better and she says oh well i'll worry about the credit card bill next month and that's the sort of thing sometimes you've got to do because it keeps the money flowing money shouldn't stop we shouldn't damn it but i to answer your question yes look i think you're going to have more than enough finances there to live your life comfortably not do stupid things but to live your life comfortably and still have a few treats along the way and i think it's time to sort of open yourself up to the universe and say i really do deserve this i really do deserve a comfortable life where i'm not stressed out all the time how i'm going to pay the bills and all those sort of things and reward yourself every now and then with a little treat even if it is only something frivolous or silly or something that you know makes your heart sing and that's good you know we all need some joy in our lives as well too there's no point in going to your grave a millionaire and have a miserable life you know life is to be lived it's to be enjoyed and every single day i think we need to find something that can put a smile on our face because you know that's really important and that helps money flow in too you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm cautious with money but i'm not stupid with it either and you know you've got to buy yourself something or treat yourself to something every now and then because that keeps the money flowing in the door but i know that you're going to do very very well cindy and you know there's a couple of little things i think you've been putting off buying for the home and i think now's the time to sort of start looking at those or working towards those sort of goals so that you feel then that you've got a sense of achievement anyway that's where we're going to leave cindy it's always very interesting when we've got you know relationships come back into our lives from the past and things like that and you know we we don't know whether it's right wrong or indifferent and it's you know for another day to talk about karmic relationships and how they can sort of keep coming back and biting us or come back to have another little session with us it's like going to the movies and seeing the same picture over and over and over again before we we, we we're satisfied and that's a little bit like karmic relationships this week i want to leave you with a song that was really popular here in australia and for the rest of the world i know you've probably never heard this song and i'd like you to sort look it up on your device and listen to the words of this song it's by a man called jeff st john and he's in a wheelchair and he he was very motivational in the way that he wrote songs and the lyrics that he wrote and the song i'm going to leave you with this week is called teach me how to fly and it's a very motivational song asking you to asking he's asking someone to teach him how to get to where he wants to be in his life and i think it's a very appropriate song for most of us that we're all trying to achieve something that we need to have some positive upliftment in our lives no matter whether it's our finances or whether we're looking to go back to a previous relationship or we're just struggling to get through our week you know not every week is is is, is a perfect week you know we all have things that crop up from time to time in our lives that we need to deal with but the most important thing is put a smile on your dial and hold those that are close to you very close to you because you never know when when they're going to be gone so until next week bye for now